Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we will talk about NRPS and fungi and this video is produced by All About Biotechnology. First of all, secondary metabolites aren't crucial for organisms' survival, however, they are of a big interest for us humans. Bacteria and fungi are often associated with disease, however, they are also of great use due to their capabilities to produce secondary metabolites, often called natural products. Examples of these natural products are penicillin. They also produce secondary metabolites for their own survival, for example, Asparagellus fumigatus produce cider forest to acquire iron, which is independent from the environment. Moreover, these secondary metabolites enhance this virulence activity. As discussed, Fumigillin and gliotoxins along with penicillin are natural products. However, they are often referred as non-ribosomal peptides. That means that they don't use ribosomes in the process of its biosynthesis. However, they use multimodular enzymes called non-ribosomal peptide synesthesis. These enzymes are made up of a series of modules. There are three types of modules. The question here, how they produce these metabolites? Are these metabolites produced in a normal manner as other proteins? To investigate this, we need to look at non-ribosomal peptide and non-ribosomal peptide thymestasis. We mentioned before that there are three types of modules. Here they are, an initiation module, elongation module, and termination module. Each of these modules contain domains. There are three types of domains. The A, adenylation domain. This domain activates the amino acid and transfer it for the modification process to the C, condensation domain via PCP peptidyl carrier protein domain. Once it has been modified by the C domain, it's added to the growing polypeptide chain. It's important to notice that each module is going to incorporate one and only one amino acid into growing polypeptide chain. That's all for today. And thank you.